Okay, last game. This is the funniest game because I beat a famous person when they were like an FM or an IM. Now they're a famous GM. They're famous not because of their chess play. They're famous because of who they are. And that was against Peter Heine Nielsen. I played him in Capella Grand in 1990. That's how old we are. He was a kid. I remember him being tall. I remember that. I'm sure he has no recollection of playing me because we played in 1990. And I was an IM. I'd just become an IM. He was 2340 Fide. Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus's coach. That's correct. It's S-E-N, but you were close, Puzzle Pawn. You get credit because you donated. Now yeah, you're still close. Peter was 2,700. Peter Hans Neiman, that's correct. Now, if somebody finally got it right, oh, well, they spelled Neiman wrong as per usual. He's not very famous. Incorrect. Bonarici, you, you don't know who's famous because you don't, you, you like sit at home like a hermit and you look at news on Twitch. So you don't really know who's famous. You're not the one to ask. Yeah. Now he's Magnus Carlsen's coach and he's very outspoken on Twitter. So he's very famous. Everybody knows he's Magnus's coach. His Twitter is very spicy. Ugh, everybody spells Neiman wronger and wronger. How does one coach the world's best player? Well, I don't coach the world's best player. Why are you asking me? Why does Djokovic have a team of people around him? Why do baseball players who are the best baseball players in the world have managers and coaches? Your question is, you know, th this is why I don't understand the world I live in. In every sport, in every game, everybody good has a coach. Then you're like, why does Magnus have a coach? He's Magnus. You know, and you're probably not a vegan. You might be a Republican. You you might you might be religious. I just I can't I can't take it. Yay, we have lots of people watching. Okay, this is my last game against Peter Heine Nielsen, 1990. This had a really good ending. The first 30 moves of the game, the engine says we both played terribly. But the last six moves of the game, that, those, that, that's the important part of the game. Okay, so he played the King's Indian. I used to play D5. It says this is equal. It wants me to play Bishop F1. Always play Bishop F1. E takes F5 is the best. Knight E2 is the best. Queen E2 is okay. This wants me to play F3, but never play F3. Now it says F3 and F4 are equal. I played F4. You always want to play F4 here and keep this bishop blocked in. Queen E7. Fe5 is correct. I'm actually playing well this game. Rook E1 is okay. King H1 is okay. C5 is a big blunder, it says. It says now white has a big advantage. Now, in 1990, I was slightly more aggressive than I am now. And by slightly, I mean way more aggressive. <clears throat> so the engine says I should play A3 or Bishop F4, but you will know my name is the Lord when I play crazy move. Man, the engine's not going to like this move. God damn. I'm afraid to play it. I think we're just going to stop now because I don't want to play this move. No, I played G4. God damn. No, the engine says I'm still better. That didn't lose much of an advantage. You know, I want the E4 square. I want my knights to go to E4. Okay, he played FG. That's the engine move. I played knight DE4. The engine wants my other knight to go to D4. Bishop g5. Now it says it's equal because that's stupid, it says. 
I play knight f6 check. That's the engine move. Now it wants him to take this, and it says it's equal, but he played king h8, and it says I'm much better. Yeah, I don't know why he did that. Probably time trouble. Yeah, this looks good for white. Knight d6 is the best move. Good. Setting up for the next game. Good. Now, in this position, I played knight f e4. But the engine move is queen, D, G, queen d3. So if he takes my queen, I have mate. And if it's my move, I could play queen takes queen and mate. So he has to play bishop e8 here. It's a funny move. Or e4. It says I'm plus two. Okay, I played knight f e4. He played king g8. I played bishop f6. b6. Takes take. It says this is good for white. It says he should play g3 here. Knight c6 is the second best move, but it's a bad move. So it wants me to take the knight, and then after bishop takes, play queen g2, and it says I'm plus two. Then I can play king g1, queen e2, and get out. Okay, but I played queen h4, which is the second best move. Now it's equal. Now he played the only move that equalizes. What's the only move for black here that equalizes? Man, he must have been pretty good. No wonder he got to 2,700. See, the idea of queen h4 is if he plays the obvious knight d4, I just play queen e7 check and win his bishop. Oh, this game wasn't played in Capelle La Grande. This game was played in Ostend. That's a seaside resort in Belgium. Bishop f5 is correct. Good job, Maximums. Okay, I played knight g3. That's the engine move. Now if he takes my knight, this wins his queen. He played bishop d7. I played knight d to e4. Played bishop here. That's okay. Knight f2 is best. Knight d4 is best. Queen e7 check is best. Now he made a bad move. He should play queen f7, although obviously giving away this pawn with check doesn't look like something you should do. He played king h6. That's a mistake. Now I made a mistake. He wants me to play king g2. What the hell? I played d6. Oh, it says I'm still much better. Now he blundered. He has to play queen e6, and then it says I'm up 0.4. But he blundered with knight c6. Now he loses immediately. And now we can play the theme from uh, Jefferson's. Because he's going to be moving on up, moving on up to the king's side. Check. He can't play queen g7 because his bishop's hanging. So he has to play king g5. d7 exclam. Is that exclam? Yes. D7 is the best move. Now I'm threatening D8 with advantage. And if his bishop takes, that gives me the E4 square for my knights. Well, you can't let me queen because then I win. You can't play queen F6 because this wins your queen. Also, this wins your queen. So he took. Now I check. Now this loses his queen. So he played king H4. Now I have several forced mates. King g2 and king g1 are both made in 9. But I played queen f2, which is made in 16. So it's still good. The best move is king h3. God damn. That's the best move? He played queen e8. I played queen f6 check. King h3, mate. And then he became 2700. And I beg for bits at a time on my stream. He became Magnus's coach, 2700, one of the most famous chess players Bonarici hasn't heard of. And I, I sit here teaching chess to Bonarici. No. 
He must have been pretty young in 1990. I'm probably 10 years older than him. I mean, if I'm 10 years older than him, that doesn't make any sense. That means he was like 10. <laughs> Let me see how old he is. Peter Hein Nielsen is a Danish chess trainer and player who Bonarici hasn't heard of. He became a grandmaster in 94. This was played in 1990. He has a record nine consecutive world chess championships as a coach, working with Anand four times and working with Carlson five times. Oh, he's 50. I'm only four years older than him. So he was 16 and I was 20 when this game, or he was, he was born in May. So he was 17 and I was 21 when this game was played. Peak rating 2,700. Also, he's a good shogi player. He won the Danish shogi championship. He achieved the mark of Tudan. His wife is also a grandmaster who used to be who used to be married to somebody else, I think. She's one of the top politicians in uh, Lithuania. She's like the equivalent of like a senator. And she's also a grandmaster, Victoria Camiltier Nielsen. I can't pronounce her actual name. Notable games. I wonder if it's the game he I lost he lost to me. What? It's just a game that he won in the Danish championship? Terrible. <laughs> the Danish show here champion. Hotly contested. <laughs> 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 That's not how you spell her name, Puzzle Plum, but you're close. <laughs>